Joining us now is Ojini Kaoji Yoke <laughs> with stories trending around the world. Just Hello, make you Jinx. louder. You saw the two-year-old boy who was excited about <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your introduction, legendary Dr. Abati. How are you this morning? I'm good. Fantastic. Good morning, Vimbai. Good morning, Oji. How are Our you today? favorite Nigerian wife. Good morning, Rufai. How morning, are you? Morning, Rufai, morning. Vimbai. I love it. Well, all right. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Embattled leader of the indigenous peoples of Biafra, Nandi Kanu, who is facing a seven-count terrorism charge, was denied bail on Tuesday while addressing journalists in the courtroom. Kanu alleged that some government officials are profiting from the insecurity in the southeast. He also claimed that if he were to be released from prison, he would restore peace in the southeast in two minutes. Eliciting reactions. Let's take a look. Anybody committing crime cannot go scot free. I swear it. They cannot go scot free. Anybody involved in any type of crime in the East cannot go free. And they are doing it because I'm, 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 I'm in DSS. That's why they, even I said no idiot can try this rubbish. And they know it very well. They know it very well. And I suspect that some people in government are complicit. Yes. They are making money with this security. That's correct. They are making money with it. They know now the county is outside. In two minutes, this nonsense will stop. Let me come out of this nonsense, this mess. Two minutes only. There will be peace. Only two minutes, I, I guarantee you. And tranquility. And there will be peace in the East. Well, all right. Let's take some reactions. This is from Vision. He wrote, does that mean he is the reason there is insecurity in the East? This statement is more indicting than what he's trying to convey. Now, my question. If really you command such power, why not give the order and let them follow it? Let the law take its course. Well, Omo Odua wrote, Nandi Kanu roars from jail. Who is the idiot in the Southeast that would go against my order? Two minutes, every violence will end. Who will tell him? Simon Ekpa has declared Biafra Republic and that they have a government in exile. I hope Simon Ekpa don't jail in Namdi Kano in Biafra Republic for treason. Dr. Bati, over to you. Okay, um, uh, Namdi Kano, the IPOB uh, leader, yeah. had a lot to say. Mm -hmm. Let's just unpack some of the things he said. First, one of the reporters asked him, why is he always wearing the same outfit? He says it's because they've not allowed him to have access to another outfit. But, you know, I, I'll find that uh, very difficult to believe uh, because it's always impeccably turned out. If it's just that one outfit, uh, at least he gets a chance to dry clean it. But I guess that's not the important part of what he said. Uh, if people are detained, if they want a change of clothes, you know, the security system is not that terrible that they will not allow you access. Look at it, it looks immaculately clean. The second point that he made is that he is entitled to fair hearing, and he's absolutely correct on that part, a point, because he said fair hearing is important, and it is under sections 35 and 36 of the 1999 Constitution. Number three, he is alleging that he's not being well treated in detention by the DSS, and that he would like to be transferred to the Kujie uh, prison. Well, even when a man is in detention, he's entitled to being properly treated. And his major concern is about medical care. Uh, he and his lawyers were saying that they brought one quack doctor to attend to him and that his medication is not the right kind of medication. He says he's suffering from what he calls congestive uh, heart condition. Yes. That's what he calls it. Now, I mean, even when you want to try a man, you, he has to be healthy before he can even answer to whatever charges in court. And he thinks, he says, in that interaction with journalists, that he's innocent and that he's not in any way guilty and that the Nigerian government is ready to stand trial because at the end of the day, they will not be able to prove anything. Uh, number five, I think. Now, he talked about the conflict, the killings in the South, East, the activities of certain persons in the South. East. And he said, some people in the Southeast who are engaging in violence, that they are criminals as far as he is concerned. Because the values that they are imposing on the people of the Southeast, those are not the values represented by what he calls our family. He kept talking about the family. And he says that that family that he talks about, the original uh, family that he leads, 
is committed to a number of principles. One, that you must not show fear in front of the enemy. Two, that you must tell the truth, even at the, at the risk of death. That after all, he so far has sacrificed you know, uh, a lot defending the, uh, uh, the family and the interests of the Igbo people. Number three, he, he also made the point that you have to help the poor. You have to do everything to help the poor. And number four, that look, the, uh, the, the uh, movement, the family, is committed to defending the interests of the people. And you cannot, you must not do anything that is in contravention of the interests of the same people that you are defending. I, I, I thought it was, it, it came across as being very resolute. It came across as someone who is in very high spirits. And I agree with him, absolutely, that he has right to fair hearing. His rights should be respected under the law and that in no way should do be subjected to any kind of uh, undue pressure. He had his lawyers with him. He, the lawyers were trying to interject, but the journalists were saying they were more interested in listening to him. So it's uh, an issue that the uh, uh, Tinubu administration will still have to resolve. There are persons who have intervened in this matter, and they have said, if a nola prosequi could be entered by the office of the Attorney General of the Federation, in the uh, uh, Yelisho Ure case, who is also, you know, quite resolute, and uh, he says, you know, he remains committed to his life of activism. There are persons who are also saying, well, the federal government of Nigeria can also resolve this matter by entering a nolle prosecue, because what uh, the summer is the summum bonum of what. Uh, uh, Namde Kanu was saying, is that there's no treasonable fellow in here anywhere. That the only thing he has done is to defend the interests of his Igbo people. All right, but these are matters that are both political and legal. You've said it all. We'll take another story. The Senate on Tuesday began investigating the recent killing of 17 officers of the 181 Amphibious Battalion in Okoma Delta State. Senate President Gospel Akbabio during plenary suggested that the perpetrators may not be from the Niger Delta region, and that they might even be mercenaries. Akbabi also stated that the nation is not at war and called for peace to be restored in the community. Your additional prayer should actually be to carry out the thorough investigation to know whether these were mercenaries from outside Niger Delta who came in to commit this crime, because I don't think these people are Niger Deltans. We are not at war, even in a period of war, to lose such number of personnel, no community will go to the extent of doing this kind of thing. I don't think they are from Niger Delta. We are calling for investigation to unravel the culprits so that they will be brought to book. And I said that it is not in the character of our people to go killing and cutting off the heads of men and women in uniform. I'm a Niger Delta. I know this is totally uncommon. This is not something anybody would think of. This is barbaric, this is brutal. This is the kind of thing that you hear with organized uh, 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 terrorist groups. Some people must be declared as terrorists. All right, Akbabio there expressing himself as a Niger Delta man. Well, in the meantime, the governor of Delta State, Sheriff Obowori, met with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Tuesday over the killing of soldiers in Okoma community. Speaking with state house correspondents, the governor said that the president assured him of his full support to bring the perpetrators to book and ensure that peace returns to Delta State. The governor also stated that although the situation at Okoma community had been brought under control, residents fled the area, adding that the situation was not what was bargained. What is happening now is something that we did not bargain for. But we want to assure everybody that there will be no more attack on the villages. If there's anyone that, will, that has happened in the past, there will be no attack. But we know that those who are caught people will brought to book. But innocent citizens will not be, will not be attacked. All right, Rufai, the governor there assuring uh, people from Delta State that innocent citizens will not be attacked. I heard you guys earlier speak with the police commissioner. I hope that 
peace returns to that region. But I'd like your thoughts on Godswilak Babu's comment as well. And, you know, I think I, I did see a viral video. It was gory. And these people also appeared not to be, you know, they were not speaking, um, you know, our language. They seemed like they were from, you know, a neighboring village. I don't know if that's what he's referring to. I don't know what sort of intelligence he gathered or maybe he's just no, expressing no, himself. So I, I don't know. I, so I'll just think he's expressing himself. Uh, also, it's best that once you don't have facts on the matter, just limit it to the point of what you know. I mean, so I'll, I don't want to make too much word about what uh, Gosul Akpabi was saying there. But I also get the slant he was trying to put on it that, you know, it's not normally the case. You know, we don't have this level. But if he also remembers historically, we've had a lot of skirmishes in the Niger Delta region that has led to a lot of chaos. But as regards this, and I'd like to touch on a couple of issues. Number one will be the governor going to Abuja. So what kind of briefing did he go grief President Tinubu when he himself did not get to the Okwama community? We learned that from this interview with the police commissioner. At least the police commissioner revealed a lot. The army has taken over. So what kind of reports did they give the, uh, what's it called? And why is it that we have only the army taken over there? We don't have the journalists going in there. We don't have other people in society being able to have an independent assessment of what is really happening in the Kwama as we speak. And question is also, do we, should we have a timeline when this operation is going to be over so that we'll be able to open that place up again? Uh, another point I would like to make is the plight of the residents that even flee the Kwama community. Where are they? Do we have IDB camps set up for them or they've been able to morph into communities like Otu Jeremy and some other neighboring communities? then we need more updates as regards this. So there are many questions that have come out. We've also heard allegations as regards killings in Bielsa and everything. Is this also part of the military extending its operation across that you know, river belt up to Bielsa, I also up to Ondo? And what are we dealing with? We need to be able to know all of this so that we make you know, informed commentaries. Yeah so that we don't have a danger of a single story that is slanted towards one place. And I keep repeating that the only slant we've been able to see from the community a representation is the DRTV interview with some of the eyewitnesses and they sit on the other side of the story. Secondly, uh, Unam Dikano, I totally agree with him. What is happening in the East now is no longer about IPOB. It is criminality. Let's call it what it is. And it's not today we've had criminality. Take you back to the early 2000s. We had massive criminality in the East in places like Anambra and the likes, that was what led to Lancelot in Maswe shooting Isakaba boys, which was like a tribute to uh, Bakasi boys, then that were stemming the time of these uh, criminals. If you remember the story of the likes of Derek Owa Mama, so it was because of the insecurity too by crime and criminality. This has just morphed. I tried to go under the shadow of IPOB. But, and that's why I also made the point where we are starting a movement or where you are agitating for something, you should also be careful because people can take the words and morph it into something else because you have many actors. And the way it is now, him saying you're any security in terms, I doubt it. Yes, yes. Things have snowballed so deep now that it takes a concerted effort. And he also talked about, you know, probably state, uh, state actors. There's been possibility of that, but we also need to investigate that. Right. To be able to bring peace to this warring faction. So there are many dimensions to the matter. But one thing I like to say is the insecurity that has enveloped this country in the last over 10 years has been legendary. Since the killing of, you know, the Boko Haram leader that morphed into what's happening in the East now, they've morphed, in, in the Northeast, that, that's morphed into banditry now. The South is the kidnapping and all of that. We just need to stem this right. one way or the other. I said we're fine. Well, meanwhile, the Nigerian armed forces have begun a three-day period of national mourning for the 17 soldiers of the 181 Amphibious Battalion who were brutally killed in Okwoma Delta State. The Chief of Defense Staff, Christopher Musa, ordered all the military installations nationwide to lower the Nigerian flag to half mass as a somber symbol of respect from March 18th, 2024 until March 20th, 2024 in honor of the fallen heroes who bravely gave their lives in service to the nation. In the same vein, 
the Castina State Government, say 10 women and six children who were among those abducted in the state last month by bandits have been rescued by troops of the Nigerian army. The victims were among the 55 persons abducted on February 3rd in Sabuwa local government area of the state. The chief press secretary to the governor said the victims have now been handed over to the chairman of the local government area who will then unite them with their families. Well, as we continue to celebrate our gallant soldiers, they have also rescued 16 residents abducted by terrorists in the Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State. The army spokesperson, Onye Mangwachiku, said the troops engaged in gun walls with the terrorists around 10.30 p.m., which led to the rescue of the abducted citizens. I mean, I am so excited to hear this. This is complete good news. news. Good yeah. news. Uh, you know, this is a, a commendation for our troops, yeah. finally. I mean, we do mourn our fallen heroes, but at the same time, we're celebrating them yeah. uh, for this amazing victory. Yeah. Bye. Absolutely, um, Oji, and uh, I think it, it, it's an important development and important for us to, uh, you know, we know the feeling and the sentiment currently going on. So, uh, you know, as Rufai said, we, we always need every side of a story and uh, whatever the sentiment may be right now, given the developments in Okwama community and all the happenings there right now, uh, it's so important for us not to paint uh, the army with one brush and one color because, in you know, Every situation, every incident, I think, should be dealt with in in isolation. Um, so, you know, great to hear this. And uh, unfortunately, still more headlines about scores of people being kidnapped and abducted and so forth. So we hope that we can maintain this positive trajectory of rescuing and also get to the point of preventing these crimes. Fantastic. We'll take another story. Nigerians on social media have reacted to a video showing the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, dining with Muslims inside a mosque in Nasarawa State. The former Anambra State Governor visited the International Market Central Mosque to participate in the breaking of the Ramadan fast on Monday evening. The video captured Peter Obi spoon-feeding a young boy inside the mosque while other congregants gathered around him watching. Ubi, in a series of tweets, revealed what informed his decision to break the Ramadan fast with the Muslims, saying that he joined other Muslims to break their Ramadan fast to symbolize unity and cooperation during the auspicious season, adding that his visit was an invaluable opportunity to gain insight into the realities faced by Nigerians, many of whom are enduring monumental hardship. All users on social media shared mixed reactions. Some praised the politicians for the, his humility. Others argued that the gesture was to enable him win more hearts ahead of the 2027 election. Well, let's take some tweets. This is from Daniel Rega, who wrote, Peter Obi breaking fast with Muslims in Abuja Mosque is playing eye service. Same way the governor of Sokoto was seen with an al Majiri kid. Of course, there's nothing wrong with such acts. But coming from Nigerian politicians, these are political moves. Obi himself is known to be seen using every opportunity to be in the spotlight and get praises. Unfortunately, he hasn't been cleared of the yes daddy allegation. <laughs> well, another user there, F.S. Yusuf wrote, election is over. Contesting candidates have moved out of the scene to their personal businesses. Only Peter Obi is still in the scene because off-season and on-season, he is a good man. However, I am concerned because there isn't so much he can do without political powers where he can effect long-term sustainable change on a large scale. While he may not be desperate for power, sometimes I wish he can match the political establishment and play the game because in this climb, the good boy is never appreciated. I've learned that it is beneficial to be feared than to be loved. Well, Abu Bakr wrote, you cannot defend the president's decision to break the fast in the presence of his cabinet, governors, and other elected officials, and shamelessly attack Peter Obi's decision to break the fast with regular people in the midst of the most vulnerable communities. Only Obi possesses the desire, bravery, and willingness to do that. And that is praiseworthy. When you visit or invite an ordinary Muslim to Iftar, he won't soon forget it. This is a selfless gesture that truly warms the heart. Dr. Vati, over to you. Well, I mean, uh, 
to those people yeah. who say this is about 2027 mm -hmm. and saying that this is a populist gesture on the part of uh, Mr. Peter B, they need to be reminded that this is not the first time he's doing this. As governor in Anambra State, he identified, you know, also with the Muslim community during the month of Ramadan. So it's not as if he's doing something that he's not been doing before. Okay, and he made a point that this is to symbolize the need for unity and cooperation. And I think that that is the important message, you know, that Muslims and uh, Christians, we are all the same, and that what should be pursued, promoted by our leaders is that sense of unity and cooperation. After all, we have a body called the Nigerian, uh, you know, uh, religious council, it's called NIREC, where leaders, across both you know, our faiths are trying to promote cooperation. I think in terms of symbolism, in terms of gesture, in terms of signaling, you know, uh, Mr. Peter B has done something that is very uh, important, providing food and also showing the humility to identify with the people. The president also you know, has been, after a tradition, having iftar, having uh, you know, breaking fast with different uh, communities, those who recommend that the president, you know, if his schedule permits, should uh, extend this to others. I've seen Muslims at uh, Arise, Arise News saying that uh, they also want the president to invite them to Iftar. <laughs> you know, I don't know whether the president will invite any Muslim from Arise, Arise News or any media house well, to, to come and bring fast. <laughs> well, but, Why not? but the whole I idea is be. about the spirit yes. of the season. This Absolutely. is the only month where People should be preaching unity, cooperation, yes. and we hope that this message will also go get across to those people who have chosen the holy month to be kidnapping people, to be killing people. It used to be the case in this same country that we used to say during the holy month, you know, we, we get some respite yeah. from criminality, but it is very strange. It is a measure of the extent of the deprivation, the degradation, how worse our condition has become. That People no longer respect the holy month. They use the holy month to play politics and to commit crime. It's very unfortunate. Oji, I have a conversation to make. Since Ramadan, I've been breaking fast with all my Muslim friends. There's no evening. In fact, this evening I have somewhere to go. Okay. Yeah, yes. You have been breaking fast. Uh, Ojinika has been cooking for some Muslims. Yes, because you will have to tell me those people you are cooking for. Because today I'll tell you because the end, I want to know who's so going to go and cook. In the end, we are all together. Yes, we are. So, and I, before, before Ramadan, we will get a lot of people and we'll break fast together and Absolutely. I will pay for their meals. Well, all right. You see, because the things that unite us are deeper than what divides us. And that's why all sorts of very funny, ill-thought-out comments that this is about politics, never about politics. All right. Is that child not a human being? What's the big deal in a politician eating with the child and being there for them? You see, that's why social media is running a lot of people mad and they're having midlife crisis. All right, Because reply. people are posting all sorts of stupid talk, thought and ideology. <laughs> Let's end what's trending. What's that? <laughs> Well, then what's trending? By celebrating Adora Muoji, who was appointed on Tuesday as Zenith Bank's new Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Muoji's appointment makes her the first female to take up the position. She will replace Ebenezer Onyagu, whose five-year tenure as GMD CEO elapses on May 31st this year. Muoji has over 30 years of experience in banking, of which 26 years has been with Zenith Bank. She's an alumnus of the prestigious Harvard Business School, where she attended the Advanced Management Program, and an alumnus of Columbia Business School with a certificate in the Global Banking Program. Well, here's a video of the moment her appointment was announced. <laughs> All right, fantastic. I mean, she has a whole list of 
accolades. I can't even read them out. I'd love to, but you know, I was so impressed reading about her and she appears to be loved because a lot of people were celebrating her. Well, I'd like to say congratulations. This is Women's Month. So befitting for her to get that appointment. Uh, Goodbye. Absolutely. I yes. love the fact that her credentials speak for themselves. I, I believe that when she walks into the room, she's always one of the most learned and accomplished people in the yeah. room. Uh, it's just a phenomenal appointment. I can't, uh, we can't wait to see what she'll do mm -hmm. in her office. I know. All right. Well, fantastic. I'd like to say thank you very much for your great contribution, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.